I think we could definitely watch some SCP Explained, which they released a new video three days ago. Its mind is simple, yet its technology is Ooh. impossible. What is a this terrifying being? It well, is, never any it is Cerberus. Inexplicable and even the downright absurd at the SCP Foundation. Few creatures manage there's to be There's no such thing as quiet. Equal measure. Then Whoa. there's SCP-6662. Never the follow. This Oro is the designation Boros? given to a Keter-class entity that remains free from Foundation containment since it cannot be physically six, confined six, six, to two. a single location. Instead, the Foundation has had to come up with measures that allow them to observe the creature from a safe distance without provoking it, while also making oh. sure that civilians remain unaware of its existence. To achieve this goal, they have implemented several diversionary tactics in order to manipulate SCP-6662 to spend its time searching more remote, unpopulated areas. Searching for what, you might ask? I don't know, well, what am I searching for? You would never guess. Let's it dive is... a little deeper into exactly let's, who. Let's guess, guys. What are we looking for? What are we searching for? Loki, they were gifting a sub. I'm looking for, yay, his underwear. Amogus, we're looking for Amogus. Amogus, guys. Or what SCP-6662 is and what coveted treasure it spends its time searching for. He's gonna SCP watch. SCP 6662 is described in its file as a part humanoid, part canid creature. Canidae are a biological family of carnivores, more colloquially referred to as dogs. Doggy. These include not only domestic pooches, but also wolves, coyotes, foxes, jackals, and a number of other similar mammals, as well as our intriguing new anomaly, SCP 6662. The main difference is that 6662 appears to be bipedal. Walking on two. <laughs> That's a funny word. Bipedal. It's like I'm saying I peed. <laughs> legs much more like a human would, as opposed to four like its canid cousins. Its similarities with humans Scarlet also King. include longer fingers, larger eyes, and more complex facial muscles that enable it to convey a wider range of facial expressions. It had a top heavy build. Its body seeming to be Yo, he called him fat. He just called him fat. That's not nice. Structured in such a way oh. that would make it unbalanced. It's not even that the upper portion of its body is necessarily stronger, as SCP 6662's musculature doesn't even seem to function in the way one would expect a human being to, or a canid for that matter. It is entirely abnormally structured with its muscles being simultaneously and paradoxically both lean and pronounced, yet also hmm. rounded and undefined. Despite possessing exaggerated masculine proportions, there is no indication that SCP-6662 is male or female. Testing by the SCP Foundation had revealed that its body doesn't produce any recognizable hormones, except for an extreme amount of insulin. Oh, that's Within a humans, lot of insulin. insulin. Is created in the pancreas and used to help convert glucose, or sugar, into energy. For the amount of insulin it oh, appears so he has to like produce, a ton of energy. the inner workings of SCP-6662 are seemingly prepared to ingest high quantities of sugar. In terms of style, SCP-6662 has a consistent choice of outfit, consisting of a wide-brimmed fedora, a zipper jacket, and a backpack with a simple button. Any fedora enjoyers? We love fedoras. <laughs> Better than platypus! Button flap. All of these are matching, made from brown leather that has been heavily weathered. SCP-6662 has never worn any legwear, but seems to not even understand the concept of why one would ever choose to put on a pair of pants in the first place. Des, that's not my nickname. I already told you guys, the ones you could call me is Hades. You can call me Dee Dee, or you could call me Eep, and that's it. And you guys are that people. Guys, I'm gonna cosplay this guy. Look at, guys, look at me. It's me. I'm, I'm the werewolf man. It was me the whole time. Surprise! Surprise! <laughs> no! Don't no call it a furry person. Stop! Hands, feet, tail, and fur all resemble that of a Canis lupus, 
otherwise known as a Eurasian wolf, or the common wolf, native huh. to much of Europe and Asia. Common wolf. However, the creature has exhibited a great deal of discomfort around mammals, and anything that isn't human seems to cause it to become increasingly confused. Does that make SCP-6662 the result of genetic experimentation? Is it some kind of hybrid between man and wolf? Maybe it is. Or is Maybe it it's a, a werewolf? Well, it doesn't seem to be either of those. Wolf but instead, baby. something far more unusual. Ontokinetics. It's the clinical term given to reality warping, with ontokinesis referring to the anomalous ability to alter reality. This is an ability possessed by numerous SCPs that the Foundation has encountered over the years. And while some might use it to write human hmm. victims out of existence or otherwise generally wreak havoc, Few deploy it in the same way as SCP-6662. SCP-6662 has exhibited the ability to manifest almost any variety of tools, bringing them into existence at will, usually by producing them from within its backpack. The things it can bring into being do not appear to function in the same way that you might expect an object from this reality. For example, in one instance, SCP-6662 produced a handheld musical instrument from its Whoa. backpack. While you might think this would be used to play a tune, Guys, this look. item actually unfolded into a fully operational tank at the push of I don't a know what I'm doing. The gadgets it creates seems to have no logic that governs their function, with many being downright scientifically improbable. While any of these items appear to be operated through the simple use of brightly colored simplistic controls and buttons, SCP-6662's technology is far more complex than even the Foundation's top researchers can understand. Experts in the field, who have been examining anomalous devices for their entire careers, oh. have been left stumped by studying the components of items SCP-6662 has created. Internally, each of these devices has a total lack of any coherent inner workings. They simply do not make sense, yet they oh, my hair disappeared because I changed the color. SCP-6662 intends. This has led many Foundation personnel to Whee! the working theory that each of the objects produced from its bag are solely operated by SCP-6662's subconscious. However, it only seems to be able to Wait. create tools that can fulfill immediate physical purposes oh. and cannot produce from its backpack anything that would satisfy its greater emotional needs. I'm just gonna cancel desires. that, not not mess SCP with that. 66, 62 actually need I thought VTube wants. Studio had it. Well, it is a creature that Hold has on. displayed an emotional Guys, didn't didn't VTube Studio have like that update where you could do like all the different like effects? Where are those? Visual effects. Oh, here it is. I found it. Particle effect? Sparkle. It didn't do anything! Chromatic aberration? Blur edges? Oh, you currently have visual effects turned off. Activate. It's still not Wait! I see the sparkles! I see the sparkle. Analog is off. Effect on human lighting effect on <gasps> ah! <laughs> I'm gonna keep, keep that one off <laughs> and intellectual range that is almost as confusing as the inner workings of the devices it warps <laughs> reality to create. The one experts e working at the SCP <laughs> Foundation have noted that when it comes to its intelligence, intelligence. it's hard to compare this wolf creature with any known level of human intellectual development. It's as inaccurate to liken it to a child <laughs> as it would be. <laughs> People, Hades is the most evil, viable, terrible god to ever exist. Also, Hades, I can see the sparkle. <laughs> to compare it to an average adult, primarily Look, because SCP-6662 the sparkles, they're all around is profoundly me. unfamiliar with and unable to comprehend any fundamental aspects of our reality. It is able to acknowledge that it is not from our reality. But also Never unable to follow. identify well, come its on own in. of origin. In addition, it can perceive no difference between itself and human beings. Any of the differences that exist between humans and this bipedal canid creature are either imperceptible to it, or SCP-6662 considers them too negligible to even be worth acknowledging. I'm just vibing. However, one distinction that SCP-6662 does make is the difference between adults and children. SCP-6662 has complete trust for children and will even allow itself to be blatantly manipulated by them, oh. believing anything they say. But in complete contrast, during its interactions with SCP Foundation personnel, the creature has shown itself to be highly distrustful of fully grown adults. 
Normally, when approached by one, it assumes that they are either angry or bored, even when Foundation staff have attempted to approach it with caution or have adopted positive mannerisms. The only proven strategy for interacting with it appears to be treating the canid creature with indifference. Otherwise, it will perceive adults as inherently confrontational. It lacks any and all awareness hmm. related to human development so it's, it's or familial structure. And not, and not very smart. It comes into contact with as a parent, regardless of whether they have children or not. Despite being at least aware of the difference between parents and children, even if it can't properly apply this knowledge to the people it meets, SCP-6662 doesn't think of itself as belonging to either of these social roles. Instead, in the rare occasions the SCP oh, Foundation sad. has been able to successfully conduct interviews with the anomaly, it has made references to an entirely different social binary that is separate from its understanding of parents and children. SCP-6662 has made reference to both keepers and seekers. When asked further questions about this by research personnel, probing the creature for more information on what exactly it thinks keepers and seekers are, SCP-6662 claimed that it was an example of a seeker, but the wolf-like entity either refused to or was unable to delineate the difference between what makes someone a keeper or a seeker. It has also not identified any other being from our reality as being either of these, and has been unable to explain more about the society or culture of whatever dimension or reality it originates from. Oh, he's just a Given lost little guy. resembles a wolf, you might be forgiven for assuming that being a seeker is akin to being an animal that hunts. Perhaps seekers and keepers are this creature's version of the hunter and gatherer categories we see in our own animal kingdom. Yet it does not seem to actively hunt for food, nor is SCP-6662 believed to be a carnivorous animal. Instead, apparently thanks to its anomalous reality warping abilities, the creature is able to sustain itself without any effort, seeming not to require food, water, or any other form of sustenance in order to survive. But then this oh. begs the question, what exactly is SCP-6662 seeking? Almost all of SCP-6662's time and energy is spent searching for something it refers to as treasure treats. The creature treasure has displayed treats? an intense fixation with attempting to track down these treats, but in a rare example of it providing elaboration, SCP-6662 has shown itself to be willing to explain exactly what the phrase treasure treats refers to. In fact, the creature has provided such extensive description of these that they've even been given their own adjacent designation by the Foundation, SCP-6662-1. Dash one. Dash the one. Treats are described by SCP-6662. Hades, please do not refer to the giant wolf monster as a little lost boy. What do you mean? He's just a little guy! And he's lost! You know, maybe he's not from this reality. Maybe he accidentally came here and everything that he knows or is looking for doesn't even exist here. Due to be an edible he's substance just a little guy. that the will go to any lengths to acquire, with the emphasis that it will do anything to obtain them. However, despite the detailed descriptions of SCP-6662-1 that have been provided to the SCP Foundation, any attempt to recreate these treasure treats or provide the creature with an existing alternative have been met with dissatisfaction and rejection by follow. SCP-6662. There is one consistency, though. SCP-6662's descriptions of their coveted treasure treats will closely resemble the characteristics of breakfast cereal, in particular, sugary cereal. SCP-6662 oh. has shown no interest in interacting with humans. Or any other living beings unless such an interaction is focused on obtaining SCP-6662-1. Whenever Foundation staff have attempted to engage with the Canid He's looking for cereal! A great deal of difficulty, the focus of conversation inevitably turns to acquiring SCP-6662-1. The anomaly will even go as far as attempting to coerce, bribe, or manipulate anyone engaging with it into assisting it in finding treasure treats. However, the creature is far from a master of manipulation and will always reveal its true intentions, given that it either lacks the developmental understanding to completely He's Tony the Titan. He's clearly a wolf. He's so not a tiger. SCP-6662-1, possibly even addicted to them, that it can't help but make its true intentions known. In order to observe the anomaly's behavior closely, 
One of the Foundation's mobile task forces was able to plant a bug within SCP-6662's backpack. This Where is he hanging from? They're the outside! The vocalizing its own thoughts, often speaking aloud about its own feelings and actions. The Cookie Crisp night. Wolf. Oh, Please, yeah, the Cookie no Crisps! I forgot within about the those. Of the recordings recovered by the SCP Foundation. SCP-6662 Movie Lost Boys? How long its no. Has gone on. It expresses an unwillingness to see the stars, as night often brings with it feelings of doubt within the creature. It seems to have lost all sense of time and a self-defensive inability to think for too long about its own memories. I've had cookie SCP crisps. They're pretty good. SCP-6662's mind crunchy. almost reflexively shuts out any thoughts of its own world as it starts to reminisce, bringing all its attention back to the present and its ongoing search for SCP-6662-1. My instinct as a seeker is to press ever forward. Each fresh dawn is a call to a new day, a new adventure. A new is this his voice? <laughs> Just as no day can be relieved, no breakfast can be re-eaten, no matter how balanced it may be. There was a time when I would have said that life is but a journey from one breakfast to the next. But now, I've explored the darkest jungles and braved the deepest tombs this world has to offer. But the only frosted oak doubloons that can be found are the pictures which yet ache in the back of my head. The creature is tormented, seeking out something. It oh yeah, definitely not the best for SVP knowledge, but it is entertaining. It, no matter how long it continues to seek. What good is a journey when the destination no longer exists? I love, I love these videos. Why should I keep videos? my eyes to the present when everything I see can only be found in the past? According to its own words. SCP-6662 has been I like that everything's animated, it especially. As that time has been wasted, as it has nothing to show for it. It even questions whether or not what it seeks can actually be found at all. Yet it is unable to stop itself from searching day in and day out. Curiously, when alone, the creature makes reference to other beings that it has memories of. In particular, one named Samuel, presumably a bird, as he apparently possesses is this the Fruit Loops bird? Toucan? Fruit? What? Toucan Sam? Maybe the other guy is the Cookie Crisp Wolf. Hey, it's him! It's him! The famous guy. This is a bee. He also references someone named Horatio. <gasps> it's him! Captain Horatio Crunch! Whoa! Who was apparently a seafaring captain? As well as an unnamed creature who dwelt. Okay, guys, I'm lost on this one. Who's the monkey? <laughs> Who's the monkey? What cereal is this? I don't know of any monkey cereal. Cocoa Puffs. Wait, is Cocoa? P You're so right. The Cocoa Puffs. SCP-6662 also speaks of a leprechaun. A Wait, yeah, yeah. Right. Cocoa Puffs is a bird. Wait, so that's a lie. We don't. We still don't know who the monkey is. Honey Nut Cheerios is a bee. Cocoa Pops. Oh, Cocoa Pops is a different thing than Cocoa Puffs. Ah. Uh. SCP-6662 also. It's him. The Leprechaun for Lucky Charms. Lucky Charms. Speaks of a leprechaun. A great tiger. <gasps> it's Tony the Tiger. A group of sky up. Wait a minute. Do they? Do they have? It? I thought they just did cookies. Oh God! What are their names? I already forgot. What is this guy? Rice Krispies. Oh yeah. Rice Krispie cereal. And an undead nobleman in a castle. Count the Chocula. The describes these beings. They were rivals and possibly even fought in some kind of conflict together. Although. <laughs> the idea, the idea that all these guys are like just b b duking it out over who who's got the best breakfast. Hold on, now I'm curious. Cookie crisps wolf. This isn't the cookie crisp wolf. Cookie Crisp Wolf wears a like, completely different outfit, and most of the time he's naked. But otherwise, when he wears clothes, it's a red hoodie and blue jean if he wears clothes. This is not the Cookie Crisp. This guy's cereal must have been discontinued. <laughs> That's why he can't remember anything. He got kicked out. <laughs> he got kicked out. His cereal got discontinued. 
I want to see a wolf cereal mascots. Yeah, I think it's literally just the Cookie Crisp Wolf, right? I don't think there is another cereal where the wolf is a mascot. Bro must have lost his clothes. Maybe it's loosely based. And treetop being seems to have been an ally. And it seems that this particular being, possibly some kind of monkey, is the one SCP-6662 misses the most. I would have gladly forfeit my remaining days of pineapple pearls, chocotastic treasure chests, and fruity fiesta gemstones. I would have made my destination the warmth of your gaze, and my purpose the pursuit of your smile. I, are they in I love? I would have followed you to the stars. I emerged from my cave, my burning heartache now tempered to <laughs> strange warmth. Questions <laughs> They're in love. Look at them go. If there are many worlds, could they share the same Fruit sky? brute. That is one that exists, but that definitely doesn't look like the right guy. You can see me from where you are. I want you. And your honey coated constellations to gaze down at this <laughs> the, the honey coated constellations. Space and time were broken for me to learn these lessons. I will break them again. I will snap every joint in the skeleton of reality between my bloody jaws until I am at your side in the cosmos. So <laughs> let's we have a creature resembling a wolf with abnormal proportions that are almost closer to a caricature. This I'm not a furry. To produce any item it needs. It's an SCP. Object even makes sense or conforms to our universe's rules of physics, almost like a cartoon. It also spends all of its time searching for sugary treasure treats, and the internal functions of its body appear to be primed to consume extreme amounts of glucose. If we take everything we know about this anomaly and put it all together, there is only one outcome. An answer so obvious and yet so outlandish that it remains the only applicable explanation for what this anomalous came at. Oh, are they going to tell us? SCP-6662. No, it's just breakfast cereal. Mascot. There's an app for that. Wait, hold on. <laughs> I'm Steve Jobs. How do we How do we go from yes, he is a breakfast cereal to there's an app for that. I'm Steve Jobs. Are you kidding me? It was a phrase so ubiquitous in the early days of the smartphone craze that it's hard Steve to believe Jobs. It actually has trademark. It was Lick a testament to a simple and immutable truth <laughs> about the world these new touchscreen phones were creating. No matter how strange and obscure the need, there would be an app to fulfill it. Perhaps you remember iBeer. The app that allowed you to I pretend beer. you were drinking a tall glass of beer. Oh, I do remember for that. For some reason. There was Car Matey, an app that reminded you where you parked your car, in a pirate voice. And who could forget I Am Bread, a surreal game about controlling a sentient slice of I want to play that. I want to play that game. That game seems fun. Toast. But there's one app out there somewhere on the market that you probably didn't download. This is not a furry SCP. Did, Don't lie well, to me. You have our sincerest apologies. Because even seeing this video pop out onto your feed probably sent a chill down your spine. Well, if that chill ever I don't even know what up, SCP this take is. Take it from one gentleman whose life took a very strange turn after downloading a certain app that the, the SCP furry Foundation SCP? calls what? SCP-1471. Because the sentiment, there's an app for that, doesn't exclude experiencing mortal terror. Joe Lewis, an insurance salesman from Milwaukee, had just gone through another atrocious date. After a mediocre meal and an uncomfortable hey, that meal looks good. Babble, sensing the whole time that she really wasn't that interested, his date excused I have not himself seen I am to take fish. a quick phone call outside. Sadly for Joe, she never returned, leaving him to pick up the check. Of all the many words you could use to describe poor Joe Lewis, the most pertinent would be lonely. Ever Lonely. since Carol, his wife of Oof. 10 years, had passed away in a freak accident, Aww. he'd been trying to find some kind of way to fill the void. They'd been That's high sad. school sweethearts, intent on spending the rest of their lives with one another. As fate would have it, only Carol would get that tainted luxury. Joe would be forced to endure life after the joy of living had run its course. He only hoped he might be lucky enough to find love again. However, Joe was on the wrong side of 40. And as so many others his age were already hitched, he could feel his options going out one by one. Oof. Would he be destined to live out the rest of his days alone? 
Joe didn't feel like spending the back half of his life catching reruns of Seinfeld and tending to his fish. He needed to get out there. And thankfully, like the rest of us, he lived in the internet age. The he had internet more apps, age. websites, Whoa. online services, That's where and we hot live. Russian singles in his area than he knew. Hot Russian singles? Whoa! Hold on a minute. Hold on. Oh. So surely one would have the right person for him. <laughs> Is it Resni? <laughs> Sign me the fuck up. <laughs> he tried them all. Tinder, Hinge, Match.com, Plenty of Fish, eHarmony, Bumble, Zeusk, OkCupid, Friend Finder, Deeply Lonely Singles with Low Expectations.com, and so much more. You see, that's his mistake. You know which one he didn't try? FarmersOnly.com. It's so simple. It's so simple. Why? Why would you? Why would you go to Tinder or Bumble or any of those other? F-rated dating apps when you can go to the best dating app ever, FarmersOnly.com. Literally. However, all it seemed to achieve was setting him up for more disappointment. None of the dates he'd managed to get ever resulted in anything getting serious. Heck. Why do all these women? Here. Why do all these women look pissed? <laughs> what did he do? Cool. <laughs> if he even managed to get any of them on a second date, was this it? Was this his life now? How are you Had this he only unlikable? Ever one shot at love, and the grasping claws of fate yanked it away from him without a second thought. Would life continue on the hamster wheel of loneliness, sleeping, He's half up, ginger. eating, working, and sleeping <laughs> again, every day getting somehow both faster and slower as life trudged on to a disappointing yet inevitable Male. conclusion? What a terrible fate to find yourself trapped in. Whenever Joe started feeling maudlin like this, Christian Farmer Mingle is the best again. dating app. <laughs> Maybe the right woman was out there. There were billions of them, after all. Surely at least one of them would be the perfect person for him. He just needed the perfect app. He'd burned through all of the most reputable apps already, and was now perusing some of the slightlier, seedier options, most of which were likely data mining fronts from the Vulcans. However, as generic app after generic app passed, Something different caught his eye. <gasps> the icon Something was different. a smiling cartoon dog, and its name. Was Malau version 1.0.0. This gave him a little chuckle. At the very least, it was very different branding from the rest of the dating apps he'd seen. Maybe it just been sorted into the wrong section of the app store. He decided he'd check it out and take a look at the app's description. The description read, Never settle for those awkward feelings of being alone ever again. Malau is an exciting and interactive experience that will keep you engaged and intrigued. The anxiety of social situations can be nerve-wracking, but after just a few hours of Malau, you will soon forget all about those painful emotions of disappointment. Be part of the new craze that is quickly becoming the next social substitute. Remember, the more you participate, the more Mallow will engage you. Your experience is completely up to oh, you. Oh, hey guys, Absolutely. I just got back. What, what's, what's been going on? I, I I literally just got back. I I haven't been here for like, geez, like five minutes? Like, what did I miss? I, I just, I, you know, I haven't been here. I just got back. What is this? Oh. Oh, is this like a dating app thing? Wow. That's no cool. Ads. That's cool. Well, it certainly provoked Joe's curiosity at the very Dating least. apps. They, he they're okay. to banish his feelings of loneliness. And seeing as the app was free and apparently had no <laughs> ads, he'd surely be foolish to not at least give it a whirl. What's the worst that could happen? He began the installation and only then noticed... That the app had no listed listen guys titties is titties ass is ass and thighs is thighs okay i don't care if there's a there's a tail connected to it i don't care if there's a pair of ears connected to it i don't care if there's fur connected to it listen titties is titties and ass is ass and all i gotta say is god damn anyway 
It took up 9.8 megabytes of memory, which he wasn't tech-savvy enough to see any issues with. More than anything, Joe was just enticed by the prospect of- I'm doubling down! I'm doubling down! I'm doubling down! You can't stop me, I'm doubling down! Math is math! Titties is titties! Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm attracted to the features, not the whole. I, 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 don't clip that! Don't clip that! I didn't mean it that way! I did not mean it that way! Stop it! Anyways, um, the point is, the point is, not a furry. It's anyway. a companionship with Mallow. No. After all, it is the next social please, substitute. Please stop. Whatever that means. <laughs> However, Joe's excitement was stop bullying me. When he hit the home screen button and noticed that the icon for the app never actually materialized. Strange. Damn. He checked the app store portal again and saw that, according to them, the app had completely downloaded. What gives? What gives, man? Or Where's my app? Actually, just malware. Either way, he was disheartened by the fact that this immaterial app. Okay, first of all, why why wouldn't you assume that something called Mallow might n not like? Why wouldn't you assume that's probably malware? Like Mallow malware. It's it's just like a weird name for a dating app to begin with. Like, this guy's just dumb. Certainly wouldn't be getting him any companionship. Or so he thought, anyway. Joe was used to disappointment by now, so he didn't take it too personally. He decided to just play out the rest of his evening on autopilot. Making himself some soup, doing the laundry, watching more Seinfeld soup. reruns, taking a cold shower, and preparing to cry himself to sleep again. Mallow was already Girl becoming man. a distant memory. <laughs> just like all the deceptive sources of home. But one strange thing happened that disrupted Joe's finally tuned evening routine. He received a text message. This Ooh. was incredibly strange because nobody text ever message. seemed to text him. The last text he got was from Carol <clears> just before <throat> her accident. So it was almost surreal to hear that alert sound now. After everything that happened, he checked and saw that- Okay, first of all, where is the math making sense here, right? The last person to text him was Carol, who died. And if he's already ready to date, you know, and she was his high school sweetheart and whatnot, and, and he's 40 now, okay? We can assume they've been together for 20 something, may, 20 something years, right? Maybe, maybe 40, I don't know, 30 I meant, 20 something years, right? So, I've, I feel like if you were with somebody for 20-something years, and they died tragically, very suddenly, and, like, it was nothing expected or anything, you'd wait many years before you started dating again, right? Which means it's probably been, like, five-plus years, maybe. Maybe two. I'll, I'll give it to him two, okay? Maybe you can move on in two years, but... Right? You mean to tell me in all that time, man's never received a single spam text? Where the fuck is this magic and how do I learn it? How do I not get any spam texts like this? What the fuck? Huh? This guy's a god. He figured it out. He cracked the code. That the text Man. was an image attachment sent from an unknown number. Perplexed yet curious, he decided to open it. <laughs> no one likes him enough to spam text. To a kind of melancholy nostalgia when he saw that the photo was of his and Carol's favorite cafe in town. They'd spent many a morning there, back when she was alive, treating themselves to a nice cup of coffee and perhaps a croissant. Why she Just was pissed? It again caused an involuntary smile to spread across his face. It never even occurred to him, as it probably would have to others, that this could be seen as a little creepy. He hadn't frequented the bakery since Carol died. How would anyone even know that this place held any significance for him? Was it a stalker, a ghost, or just a spooky coincidence? None of these thoughts even crossed Joe's mind. He was just grateful for the surprising reminder of the happiness he'd once had. For the next couple hours, things seemed lighter. He went about his evening, checking the photo every so often and smiling, until eventually he found himself in bed. 
still looking into the glow guys just doesn't even such a beautiful care then he froze he noticed something in the picture it'd been there the whole time but only now he was seeing rather than just looking oh it was in the corner hey. staring through the glass of the cafe store so faint he almost wanted to dismiss it as a trick of the light it was a face well not a face more like a skull not a human not anywhere near human long slender and canine with protruding fangs and vacant white eyes hmm. the pure white of the skull was buried in a nest of thick black hair it looked like it was crouching behind the door looking out and grinning whatever the hell it was just seeing it changed the entire tone of the picture it was no longer a simple Mallow is a th free door. therapist now all that was radiating oh out of that image was a palpable sense of dread was someone playing some kind of awful prank on him just then he was jogged from his contemplation by another alert a new message from the same number as before with great hesitation he oh boy don't do it don't open it and clicked That's oh when god got a lot worse, got a lot worse. i bet a of a bus stop not just any bus stop of course wait a minute c16 wait a minute guys this ain't the lady i saw in that thumbnail of the app where did titties go where's the thighs look at those skinny little legs what the heck i got scammed i got catfished by a monster fuck to get to work it looked like it was taken relatively early in the morning but nobody was there well not quite nobody there was that figure again it stood at full height behind the partially frosted glass that makes up the back of the bus stop. The Man. same large black humanoid shape with a white grinning dog <clears throat> skull where the face should be. It Something only happens it when you're scared. On such a primal huh? level, like the way our lizard brain reacts to some ancient apex predator. And whatever this thing was, never to follow. We really knew something about him. How else? I have to pay extra for those. What? Joe got out of bed and looked out of the Extra. window, down onto his dark front street, empty. Why? Thinking. But after this surprise nightmare, he wasn't going to take any chances. He grabbed a kitchen knife from downstairs and placed it on his bedside cabinet, right next to his phone, with 911 on speed dial. Joe Lillis, a 43-year-old man, slept with the lights on that night for the first time in over 30 years. Sadly for him, the nightmare was just beginning. The next morning, Joe woke up unharmed, but he wasn't pleased to see that he'd gotten several more texts in his sleep. There was one taken outside of the local insurance company office where he worked. The strange creature with the skull for a face was looming around the corner, peering at the camera with its lipless grin, like it was mocking him. Another photo was taken at the local supermarket where Joe did most of his grocery shopping. The frame was centralized on the cereal aisle bordered on both sides by walls of garish mascots endlessly repeated. Down at the far end of the aisle was a looming dark figure with that cold canine skull where a human face should be. There were a few more, but worst of all was the last one. It was taken at the cemetery. In the foreground, a headstone reading, Carol Lillis, beloved wife and daughter. Joe was oh. horrified to see that skull-faced oh. beast was rising up behind his wife's grave long clawed fingers curling around the top of the headstone that was the moment that joe decided to go to the police about all of this before things got even more out of hand he called an uber to get down to the station he certainly didn't feel like he was going anywhere near his regular bus stop after last night he showed the photos he'd been sent so far to an officer posted at the station and they agreed that there was certainly something strange about it while the behavior undeniably bordered on harassment it hadn't yet delved into criminal territory, so he would sadly be on his own until then. The best they could do was stay in touch and kept abreast of any new developments. The only sage advice they could give him was not to delete the photos, as they could always be used as evidence in court later if things escalated. This was literally the last result that Joe wanted out of this. Considering how bizarre and threatening things were getting already, he really didn't want to find out what escalation looked like in this case. But what else could he do but carry on, just trying to exercise as much caution as he could in these strange new circumstances? He went to work and tried his best to stay productive, despite the fact that every Sorry few guys, so I'm, lo hours, I'm looking at something. Places that he liked to sit in the local parks, stores he'd frequent, 
restaurants he liked to eat at. The nightmare skeleton dog thing would be standing in all of them, just mugging for the camera. On one hand, every time he looked at one of the photos, Joe felt like he was giving this freak exactly what they wanted. On the other hand, how could he possibly look away? What if he missed something that could save his life? It carried on much like that until later in the evening. Joe may have not been a genius, but he was no fool either. He'd seen too many of those seedy true crime documentaries about kidnapping to take his normal route home. He took a real detour, frequently checking over his shoulder the entire time. Much to his relief, he didn't see anything out of place. Good. When he got home, he locked every door and bolted every window. Nothing would be getting the jump on him tonight. That's when the next picture came in. A photograph of Joe's empty office cubicle, with the bony face of the creature looming over the divider with a grin. He could feel his heart pounding away in his chest just there we go. looking at okay. it. How did this thing <laughs> I'm not looking at Mallow fan art! How was it able to I was responding to something important! In his goddamn life. Suddenly, he felt Stop a it. smile spreading across his face. This freak had just messed up big time. Before all these creepy photos had been taken in public places, but the one taken in his office? Oh, this crossed the line into trespassing. The police would have to do something about it now. <gasps> it had given him the freaky guy fucked sleep. up, but that not really. That faded a few hours later when he received another photo. This time, it was the skull-faced monster just standing on the sidewalk. The sidewalk that Joe remembered walking on his covert alternative route. He could feel himself oh, break into a cold sweat. It seemed whoever got a printer. Was, he really did hold no. What printer? That's just my PC. Isn't it? Isn't it great? Doesn't it sound great? Don't we love this thing? Yeah, it's my dying fans and my power supply. So there's two main issues with my PC right now. One, my power supply is insanely old, and the fan in it is like basically dying. And then the second thing, my exhaust fan in the back of my PC is also kind of dying. But I have a new um, power supply ordered and it's coming. So I'll be replacing it. And then I'm probably going to take the exhaust fan I have out and replace that as well. And then it should be quiet again. So there's, there's nothing wrong with it hardware wise other than the fans just kind of being bleh. No secrets from them. Now more than ever, Joe didn't feel safe in his own home. So you can only imagine how he felt when a few hours later, he received a photo of the skull-faced stalker standing right outside his own front door, staring into the camera. Oh, it sent damn. him rushing to the window again to check outside, but of course, nobody was there. The next day when he called the police and updated them on the situation, they told him that they were doing all they could. The best thing he could possibly do was to remain calm. Remain but calm. Vigilant. Don't panic. He needed panic. to keep an eye on the photos being sent to him, so he could notify them if ever he was in Don't any immediate panic. danger. Don't panic. This put poor Joe's paranoia at a fever pitch. Even when he went to work, surrounded by his co-workers, by witnesses, he could scarcely tear his eyes away from his phone. He was a slave to the photos, Hold on, where forever the waiting for the next one only to experience crushing regret when the photo actually arrived. It looked like it was taken moments before it was sent to him. Joe saw There's himself no way. looking at his own phone in his office cubicle with that huge skull-faced figure looming behind him. What the he fuck? Out loud upon Staff Sand, if you're watching this, if anything was behind I hate you. But of course, there was I hate nothing you. There. How dare you? The police inspected the office, talked to potential How witnesses, and analyzed the photo. It showed no signs of any photographic manipulation, but there were also no nope. witnesses nope. around the office. Nope, who I'm not looking. I'm not looking, Spartacus. Nope. Day. There was also no security camera footage in the last several days that showed this figure coming in or out. Joe Lillis started to feel like he was going insane, and perhaps he was. But that didn't change the tangible and ever present feeling that he was in great danger. He didn't come into work the next day, he'd receive more photos like that in the night of himself, taken in real time, with that skull face freak looming. He didn't want to leave Oof. the house. He didn't want to go anywhere anymore. He just didn't feel safe out there. How could he, How do you with all this madness unfolding? There Why would you not feel safe? Just go like, outside. At least it only seems confined to my phone. He might have even suspected that it had something to do with that strange Malo app he downloaded a few days prior. 
that hadn't seemed to do anything. But this situation had evolved since then. He wasn't just seeing the creature in photos anymore. It was here. He kept seeing quick flashes of it on the other side of windows. Uh. In reflections in the corner of his eyes. Always darting away if ever he turned towards it. It was everywhere and nowhere. Everywhere and nowhere. He just knew. The police couldn't help. Nobody could help. Joe just sat in the corner of his bedroom, clutching his <laughs> kitchen knife, afraid to Minute. close his eyes. It could be anywhere. It could be anywhere. It could be anywhere. We know one thing for sure. Joe Lillis never felt truly alone ever again. He always had his new friend waiting just out of sight. And if ever you're feeling lonesome and decide to download Malow version 1.0.0 yourself, then you'll never feel lonely again either. Dr. Gears was having another boring day. Wait, why is it a child? Why is this child downloading a dating app? Huh? Explain. Why?